working for the lower segment of the populace. It is against the backdrop of the enactment of the capital markets, also known as Real Estate Investment Trusts or Collective Investment Schemes Regulations 2013, that the Nairobi Securities Exchange became the fourth African bourse to launch the Real Estate Investment Trust rates market in 2013. For years down the lane, Stanley Fahari rate, the first real estate investment trust in the country, last week but one recorded 108 million shillings in net profit for the year ended 2016, with management citing the profits are despite a difficult working environment. The CEO noted that there are general low levels of awareness on what rates are. And this is exactly why we're having this discussion on corporate talk. Now joining me in studio is Esther Umulele, Head of Commercial and Property Department at MMC Africa Law. Very, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Maya, for inviting me. So <coughs> as we said, of course, this is an area that people are not really aware about. So for those who may not understand what, uh, what rates are, can you just tell us what it is? So rates are a real estate investment trusts or vehicles that are put together for purposes of owning, developing, and managing real estate. And what is listed um, at the stock exchange would be the REIT securities. All right. And um, why were REITs created? Um, REITs, the purpose of REITs is really to uh, pool funds because uh, what you find is that the cost of buying land, the cost of construction is, is, is really high. And, and for, for purposes of uh, encouraging investors to come into this market or even for developers who are within Kenya to, to invest properly within the real estate sector, um, the REITs were created for purposes of just uh, providing an alternative funding to, to those sort of uh, uh, enterprises. If I could give an example of uh, something like a mall, the cost uh, of, of, of building a mall, the construction cost, the cost of buying land, because the land has to be in a, in a prime location. So the cost of all that is high. And then if you look at the banking sector in this country, a lot of the banks are not um, keen to finance construction because the construction risk is, is said to be high. So REITs then were created as, as an option to, to to fund uh, real estate uh, developments, yeah. And why is there such lack of information and how is this hindering the progress of REITs, would you say? Um, perhaps to answer that, I could just uh, take us back a little to uh, when the NSE was, was founded. Um, 1954, we had the Nairobi Stock Exchange uh, at the time, and it was an association of stockbrokers. And what they did at the time was to meet and uh, they would uh, trade shares, and the trading of shares was, was manual. So 1954, way before independence. So as time went by, um, in 2000, and I think the year 2000, the CDSE was, was formed, the Central Depository Settlement Corporation operation was established. And the purpose of that uh, CDSC was to automate um, the market. It was manual, then there was need to automate it. Then what happened in 2003 is that there was a lot of education around the, the, the stock market and what it does, and now the automation of that market. And what happened then, because of all that information, um, people then were aware of, of, of what the market was about. Now, if you look at the listings that have happened over, over, over the years, there was, I think in 1996, there was the KCB initial listing. No, 88 was a KCB initial listing. Then in 96, there was a Kenya Airways. So all of that talk about uh, stock, the stock exchange, well, it's, it's been alive and it's been vibrant. Um, then come 2011, the, the name of the Nairobi Stock Exchange was changed to Nairobi Securities Exchange. And why was that done? It's so that to allow the, the, the stock exchange to, to trade in more than just stocks, yeah, to allow for additional products which can be traded on the secondary market. But what you find is that even when that happened, there wasn't too much talk about about the fact that the name has now changed from uh, perhaps the Nairobi Stock Exchange to the Nairobi Securities Exchange. So lack of information around that. Now come 2013 when the CMA regulations on REITs were, were, were passed, again, there hasn't been a lot of information out there. So that when you say and you tell the public that I am so-and-so and I have a REIT to list, they will wonder, what are you talking about? As far as we know, when we talk about the, the NSC, we're talking about stock, we're talking about shares. So what is what, what are REITs really is the question and uh, lack of information therefore. 
So you'll find a company wanting to lease, they will do perhaps a bit of marketing here and there, but because people are not aware of what uh, you know, REITs are, then you, you could even have one that is undersubscribed. So who ideally invests in REITs? I mean, um, who does this market suit? Okay. There are two kinds of REITs. Uh, one is a development REIT, and the development REIT is, is reserved for professional investors. And the reason for that is that uh, construction comes with plenty of risks. I mean, um, the, 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 the cost of construction could change, uh, interest rates could change sometimes. We are now at 14%. If, so if uh, uh, someone has borrowed at that rate, it could change, and, 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 and the pricing and the, even the, the profits could, could really change within a very short period of time. So for uh, development REITs, those are reserved for professional investors, people who are able to assess a, a project or a product and, and, and they can tell whether the, the product is fit for the purpose for which they are investing. Then the other kind of REIT is an IREIT or an income REIT. And now an income REIT is open to anybody who may wish to, 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 to invest in it. And the reason for that is that an IREIT is an income REIT. So um, what the trust is required to do or the trustee and the REIT manager are required to do is to acquire assets that generate an income, that uh, uh, generate rental income and, and therefore um, anybody looking at it, even if you're not a professional in the real estate sector, you'll be able to tell whether if, 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 if the REIT asset is, is something like Westgate, you'll be able to tell whether that is, is likely to give a good return. Why? Because the, maybe the space is sold out, um, you have tenants who are paying a particular rent, so you can assess easily and, and tell. So, so REITs, depending on what it is, if it's a development REIT for professional investors, if it's an I-REIT, it could be open to any investor. So you've just spoken about returns. I'm sure people want to know how uh, generous those returns are. In terms of investments, how good of an investment is it? Uh, well, it, it, it really depends on the assets, the underlying assets within that REIT. Um, because if, if you have a REIT, for example, that is is diverse, you know? Uh, you have retail space in there, you have commercial space, you have uh, residential, you have industrial, it's a diverse REIT. What will happen is that it's likely to perform well because if, for example, there's an oversupply, say, of retail space, and that then is not selling and the vacancy levels are high, the, and on the other hand, you have industrial, which everybody is looking to get. Right now, if you look at our industrial area, for example, it's full and there's not even much space. So if your REIT comprises of assets that are, are likely to give a good return or are even of good quality, for example, then um, it will be a good REIT, it will be attractive, and it will be something that will be interesting for an investor to invest in. Thank you very much for that. And that was Esther Umulele, Head of Commercial and Property Department at MMC Africa Law. Just speaking about real estate investment trusts, if you, I'm sure you've heard REITs uh, a lot during this interview. So that's what it stands for. It stands for Real Estate Investment Trusts and why they really haven't worked. And just informing you on uh, how you can better invest in that. But let's move on over, over to other stories now. Global airlines have warned against measures that restrict open skies at the wrap-up of an aviation industry event in Kankan, where security and a possible laptop extension ban were high on the agenda. The International Air Transport Association has made a full-throated defense of globalization at their largest annual gathering. The body has vowed not to give up on climate change agreements and cautioned against excessive restrictions placed on passengers amidst security fears. Sarah Adam reports. We explored issues of globalization, human trafficking, innovation, customs facilitation, and much more. Um, but the most important thing that we have done is to remind governments that our industry is vital, and we depend for our very existence, the economic and social benefits that we bring. We depend on borders that are open to people and to trade. IATA General Director Alexandra De Juniak said he has written to the UK and US to prevent any further extension.